Hey everyone, welcome to the Mycology Society. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for being part of our community. Before we jump into today's video, I wanted to introduce myself and share a couple of quick updates. My name is Tyler. I started the Mycology Society about a year and a half ago and I, I did not expect it to take off like it did. We were up to 4,000 subscribers and right after I started the channel, I had some complications from my, my brain surgery that I had a couple years ago and was off for a good seven or eight months and the channel continued to grow without me doing much so thank you all so much for your support you wouldn't be here without you and, and i'm so grateful for you following along and for you being part of our community like I mentioned, I had brain surgery a couple years ago. I found mushroom cultivation in the lead up to my brain surgery and it became one of my go-to stress relievers. It was incredibly healing for me both before and after my brain surgery and it continues to be a huge part of my day-to-day -day life and a big coping strategy that I, that I use in all honesty. But I, I want to be able to share that joy of mushroom cultivation with you all and so I wanted to let you know I'm working on a series of mushroom cultivation videos specifically for the Mycology Society, walking you through the entire mushroom cultivation process from preparing your substrate all the way through to completing multiple flushes. Now you see I have a jar of grain spawn here in my, my hand. This is blue oyster grain spawn. This is going to uh, help us grow some blue oyster mushrooms. This is a mycelium inside that has overtaken and is eating up some popcorn grain spawn that I prepared for it. So in this video you're going to be learning how to make the jar lids for this which is an important step of kind of moving beyond Uncle Ben's bags and taking your mushroom cultivation skills to the next level. And, and I'm all about growing high quality mushrooms and growing a lot of them so having a, a high standard for the mushroom cultivation process is very important to me and so I'll be walking you through step by step how to grow your mushrooms from beginning to end so you're going to want to make sure to subscribe to the channel. In the meantime I have another resource I'm I want to share with you. I run another channel called The Conscious Cultivator and that's more of a general gardening channel. We focus on growing medicinal plants but we, we do grow mushrooms over there and we have a series, a playlist on how to grow mushrooms for beginners basically. Mushroom cultivations for beginners. So I want to share that with you. It's The Conscious Cultivator and be sure to check out that playlist if you're interested. Be sure to follow along over there because we do share some different mushroom cultivation content that's different over here. I try not to do too much cross posting. I do change it up a little bit but I am working on specific content here that I'll be posting weekly so you're gonna to want to be sure to follow along a couple of other things I want to mention quickly uh, over at the conscious cultivator we're starting a few classes mushroom cultivation classes that are going to be all online one of them is a mushroom cultivation course where you can do uh, the entire grow with me it's gonna take about 8 to 12 weeks we're gonna go from start to finish live sessions each week where I'll be teaching you the basics of growing mushrooms you'll be learning all of my secrets and tips and tricks along the way I also have a mini course specifically on microdosing that I wanted to share with you all. So you'll be learning not only how to create the best regimen for yourself in terms of microdosing either gourmet or medicinal mushrooms, but also how to make capsules, how to make tinctures, the 101 course. Be sure to check that out. I will share the link for that in the description. I'll put it up on the screen for you here. And if you have any questions for me, you can leave me comments. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can, but I do make an effort. I read them all and I do make an effort to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. So leave me comments. You can also email me at mycologysociety at gmail.com. It is just mycologysociety at gmail.com. Email me with any questions. If you need help with your grow, I will get back to you and try to support you as best as I can. Thank you so much for being part of our community. Thank you so much for following along. Like I said, this channel wouldn't be here without you. We wouldn't be growing without your support. I'm really excited for the months ahead, excited for the new content I'm gonna be posting and just really grateful for your support. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy this video and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the new content I'll be posting here in the coming weeks. Thanks so much, everyone. Are you new to growing mushrooms, but you're ready to move past to Uncle Ben's bags? You ready for some real-time mushroom growing? <laughs> if you are, you gotta start growing with either jars or mushroom growing bags. And jars are gonna be the most accessible to home growers. They're overall a little bit cheaper. You can use them over and over again. And some people argue for bags. I'm more of a fan of bags myself, but it's important to know how to work with jars because most people are gonna start there. One thing to know is that you can't use the ordinary jar lids when you're preparing your mushroom grain spawn. 
Now you can, but you have to use this method. I don't know the official tech name of it, but you have to turn the lid over and keep the lid just partially screwed on so air can release. And that's a big reason we can't use this lid, uh, this type of lid. Uh, this is meant for preserving, for sucking all of the air out, and we need to have some sort of uh, hole in there for gas exchange because mycelium that is gonna be growing inside the jar, it needs air to breathe, it needs oxygen just like humans. So they need oxygen to breathe, they release carbon dioxide. So that's what's gonna be happening inside this jar. So basically what we're gonna be doing today is drilling a hole inside the top of the jar. And then you can't just leave it open, otherwise germs will get in, bacteria will get in, and you're gonna be susceptible to contamination. You don't want that. So we are going to be using these micropore filter patches. Whoops, you can buy these on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think you can get a pack of 90 of them, for 10 bucks, something like that. But these are basically the micropore tape you use on your Uncle Ben's bags or in any of your other mycology work, but just in a filter patch form. These are really nice. They look nicer, but they're just easier to use than micropore tape as well. I've used micropore tape. They get a lot funkier when they get wet. Uh, you have to replace them more often. They leave residue on, on the top of your jars. These are just a lot cleaner, a lot easier to use, and they look nicer. So I think they're worth the, the money to buy these, and they're, they're pretty cheap. Like I said, you can get a hundred of them or so for about 10 bucks. For the drill bit we're gonna be using, you can use ordinary drill bits, but they will cause the metal to shard a little bit or to tear, especially if you're not careful. And I believe actually, if I'm remembering right, you actually have to drill from the bottom of the, the lid versus doing the top down, like we're gonna be able to do with these Forstner drill bits. So you can use a regular drill bit, but just know, take the lid off, put the lid upside down on a piece of wood and then drill through it that way. Because then when you pull out that drill bit, it's gonna pull the metal back a little bit. And it's okay if that's on the bottom of the jar lid, but when it's on the top, it's gonna cut through either the tape or the filter patch that you put on there. So with this Forstner bit, it's gonna give us a nice level hole. With a regular drill bit, when you pull out, that's what she said. I should have finished. When you pull out, it's gonna leave. It's gonna pull up the metal and uh, you're gonna have a, a little rim around it that you don't want. So, we'll do the other side with the regular drill bit. What I'm using today are these Forstner drill bits. You can get a set for about, I think I saw them for as cheap as 18 bucks when I was just living quickly earlier today. And these are just these flat, they're, let me show you one. I'm gonna show you the one on my drill. We're gonna be using a 3 8 of an inch Forstner drill bit. There's a set there. And these are just these rounded, get in focus here. You can see that <laughs> it's this little round cutting bit. And the purpose of these, I'll show you a bigger one just so you can get a sense of the shape. The purpose of these are to uh, drill, you can drill a hole that's flat bottom. So if you're not drilling all the way through a piece of wood or something, you're just drilling partially the part, part of the way down you can drill, it'll give you a completely flat bottom. The reason that's nice here is because it gives you a nice clean hole without pulling the metal up and leaving the shards like a regular drill. So these Forstner drill bits, especially if you have other uses for them, this was a family member's that I inherited, so it worked out well in my case. However, if you have other uses for it, 10 to 20 bucks, you can get a set of them. We need a 3 8 of an inch, inch bit, whether you're using a regular drill bit or this Forstner drill bit. And uh, I'm sure you can get some regular drill bit. Uh, somebody that's handier than me can chime in and tell, tell, it, tell me what to use. Uh, something other than this, something specifically for metal, since we're drilling through metal. If you're using uh, plastic lids, which I, I might make a video on that, there are these special drill bits you can get that are good for plastic. They're called Brad Point Drill Bit. And they basically just have this sharp little point, uh, pointed tip on the end. And then they're really nice for drilling through plastic without uh, causing the plastic to crack. So if you're using plastic lids, it's worth getting these Brad Point drill bits. If you're using metal lids, I recommend these forged drill bits. All right, let's get down to business. You'll notice that my lids are still on my jars. So when I'm using the Forstner drill bits, it's just a lot easier to just keep it on the jar. You can just drill straight through. Otherwise, what I've done in the past is you take it off, you just put it on a piece of wood because you don't want to drill through your table and, and you just drill through that. Um, but then you have to hold it down. Sometimes it'll catch and it'll spin. And it, it, it's not hard. I've just found this to be a lot easier, especially you don't even have to take it out of the box, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's not quite that quick, but it's fairly quick. So 
Let me slide this closer to the camera for you. One thing to know is you do have to go kind of slow. You can't, as much as I want to slam through the uh, NASCAR tire or something like that, uh, you can drill through fairly quickly, but it's that pulling out motion that you have to be careful of because you can have the same thing happen. This bit can catch and pull the metal up and rip through the patch, which will cause it to rip through the patch that we put on later. We don't want that to happen. I had that happen earlier when I was doing some of these. If it does happen, you just take a screwdriver and flatten out that hole so it's nice. So let's do a couple of these. We'll show you how it, I do these. Now I'm I'm just a little OCD for whatever reason. I like the holes. I like them to line up with the writing. So you only need one hole. If you're making these for liquid cultures where you're gonna do an injection pour and have a gas exchange, you'll need two holes. Different size holes typically if you're putting in a syringe filter or something like that. So that, that's another thing you can use instead of using these filter patches or micro pour tape, you can use these little things called syringe filters. And it's basically just like this little plastic device that has this type of filter in the center, but uh, it's kind of like a little tube that you can put, you have to glue into the lid, lets air out, but it doesn't let air in. Nice thing about those is that it doesn't get wet. It has plastic cover. So anyhow, let's drill through these and then we'll put some filter patches on it. This is the most common way you're gonna see. And this is gonna be used for any type of mushroom grain spawn. And I should show you, these are wide mouth, 32 ounce quart size jars. So these are the typical jars. These are gonna fit in most pressure cookers, whether it's a standard pressure cooker or an electric pressure cooker. I use an electric pressure cooker. It'll come to me, I've talked about it before. But anyways, um, the electric pressure cooker, uh, I think is a very easy, practical way to go. So I like to do the hole right on the side here. Now you don't wanna do it right up to the edge because then uh, the filter patch will go up the edge. I like it to be completely flat. So this actually has a little tip on it, like the Brad point uh, bits. So I'll actually, I'll actually poke through first and then just start to drill. And you'll see, like I said, it will slam through there quite a bit at the end. And you do have to pull it out while it's, ha, shouldn't have done that. It's, it, we're good and flat there, but you do have to pull it out. I'll show you on the next one while it's still spinning. If you stop it on the inside there, I was trying to talk so you can hear me. But if you stop it while it's on the inside, you're gonna have a really heck of a time getting it out. But you'll see, I have a nice, even flat hole there. It's not sticking up at all. It's not cutting my finger. The filter patch is gonna cover that really nicely. And it's a good size air hole. Again, that's a three eighths of an inch drill bit. So three eighths of an inch size hole there. And when we cover it with these air or with these filter patches, it's the perfect size. And you'll see on the other side that uh, there's just a certain size uh, that's actually not covered by adhesive. So uh, let me do a couple more. I'll plow through these real quick. Again, you gotta line it up with that writing. So I've actually, for my demonstration, uh, trying to slow it down at the end. I don't know if that's helping or hurting. Hoping that it'll just slowly cut through there. See, because if you go fast, it will just cut right through. These Forstner bits are, are really effective. See, when you've got them lined up in a uh, box here, you literally can just go one by one. Pull it out while it's still spinning. That's what she said. My wife hates when I do that. All right, and these are all looking nice and flat. My wife hates the that's what she said jokes. Not, my wife doesn't hate it when I pull it out. It's, I guess I'll just, I'll just stop. There she goes. There's 12 jars. Let's see if I can get these filter patches on here quick enough. So these filter patches are just maybe, I don't know, half inch in diameter. Uh, the adhesive covers around the edge pretty, maybe not an eighth of an inch inward. And so the actual filter that's available is smaller than this, this total diameter. So you need to be mindful of that. I'm not sure if that's showing up on camera or not. But when you're putting it on, you can't just put it on willy-nilly. You do have to line it up a little bit. So I've gotten fairly good at doing it over the last couple of years. So I'm pretty quick at it. But when I first started, man, it would take me forever. Just because I've got fat, numb fingers. <laughs> They're numb from my aftermath of my brain surgery, which I've talked about in other videos. So I won't bore you with that today. Let me talk a little bit about what you're gonna do next with these. So these are ready to use. You might wanna let them sit for a little while. 
let that adhesive really get good to really stick on there. But even so, I think you'd be okay to use these right away. I don't know that I'd stick them in the pressure cooker immediately, but nonetheless, they're ready to go. Almost done. So the only other thing before you cook with these, actually this is during the cooking process, just to know this would be covered more during the next video in this, this type of series here in the process. But when, you're, when you have your grain spawn in the and you're ready to cook in the pressure cooker, you wanna be sure to cover these lids with tin foil. Otherwise, a couple things happen. These filter patches get really soaked and they're gonna, these will last for quite a while. I, I use them for multiple runs and use them until they get gunky or just noticeably dirty and ready to be changed, but uh, multiple runs. But if you get them wet, uh, the more often they get wet, the more quickly that you're gonna run through them. So cover it with tin foil. But the, the main reason you cover it actually is not just to protect your filter patches, but water's gonna get in there and beat the whole purpose. When you have your grain spawn in here, you want it to be a, a certain moisture level for your mycelium to, to grow and thrive. So last thing to note, if you hear that, that's because on the inside of our jar now, we have this cute little shiny thing that goes on like a dress or a shoe. There you go. That's from the inside of your jar or from your jar lid. It, it's on the inside of your jar typically. Sometimes it'll hang on the bottom. Just tear it off, but be sure to throw those away. But there you have it. You have your mushroom grain spawn jar. You can see it's covered there with the filter patch. Top of the lid has the three eighths of an inch hole in it now. Ready to go, ready to fill your jar with grain spawn. Cover with tin foil, stick it in the pressure cooker cook away. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be uh, uploading a lot of more videos related to mycology, showing you how to grow mushrooms from start to finish. And the reason I'm showing you how to make these lids are because if you don't have the right gear to make your mushroom grain spawn with, if you don't have good grain spawn, you're not going to be able to grow mushrooms. So it starts here. You can definitely use something like an Uncle Ben's bag, a ready-made bag of rice. Nothing wrong with that, but I know for me personally, I graduated beyond Uncle Ben's pretty quickly. I was ready for more. I was ready for a bit more of a challenge, and I was also ready to just do bigger mycology projects. So in order to do that, it helps to move up to grain jars from your Uncle Ben, Uncle Ben journeys. So thank you guys so much for watching this. If you like the video, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot by just showing YouTube that you like my videos. And so it will keep sharing them with you guys when I post. So like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and leave me comments. I do my best to get back to everybody right away. I read all my comments and do my best to engage with you guys as much as I can. You can also email me at timeforrain420 at gmail.com. If you guys need anything or if I can support you anyway, be sure to let me know. Thank you guys so much.